Hello, my name is Nicholas Bell, and it's my great pleasure to be able to speak with Joao Canijo uh, for his new film, Bad Living, which premiered at the Berlin Film Festival this year. It won the jury prize. Uh, it is Portugal's official submission in the category of Best International Feature. Uh, so congratulations on that. Um, I, I think I need to start out by saying I, I love your film. Uh, and of course, it's sister film, uh, Living Bad. Um, I know I'm familiar with your work and I know that you take, uh, you use a process that's not unlike Mike Lee, uh, where there's a lot of pre preparation. And this one had uh, two years of preparation of research and discussions. Uh, how did was that lengthened when you decided to make it two films? Well, uh, the process comes a long way back. It came from uh, Blood of My Blood in 2010. <clears throat> How did I decide it? I decided, uh, well, the, the, the hotel could be an empty hotel in a low season. <clears throat> but uh, I, I thought since the beginning, it would be much more interesting if the hotel had clients because the, the, the owners of the hotel promiscuity and too much intimacy would be observed by someone else and would be more uh, interesting. But we didn't uh, add the money for the clients. <laughs> 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 so once we got the money for, for the clients, immediately the idea of two films was on. I, and, you know, Blood of My Blood is a good reference. Anyway, uh, can I say something? There's no, a much better title in English, but we just found out too late. And it would be Barely Living. Barely Living. Yeah, that's that works as well. Much better, but uh, now it's, it's done. <laughs> um, having watched it a second time, uh, another good title would have been something like Everything is So Difficult, because... They keep, women keep <laughs> and, and that's my reaction is like, God, they're just so difficult and frustrating, but in a, in a sad and also very entertaining way. Um, it didn't arrive with, it didn't arrive with the other one. Yes. Um, but uh, better living, yes, because it would be better living and living, living barely. Barely, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, what's funny is compared to, uh, living bad, the women in this, they're hardly the most dysfunctional. They're <laughs> the, I, I'd argue that some of the guests are worse off than these ladies, but uh, I, I love how the hotel feels like a, a beautiful prison. Like they are, they're stuck there. They're defined by it. Um, I want to talk about your narrative influences because I know that Bergman and Strindberg were kind of the jumping off points for the story. Yes, completely. They, they were. And uh, I went back to Strindberg and uh, it started with a, a play, a Strindberg play called The Creditors. Okay. But everything changed afterwards, of course. Oh, sure. It changed during the process. Well, even... Uh... It changed a lot. Because at the beginning they 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 were three sisters. Oh, okay. There was no mother, mother, grandmother. The grandmother was the older sister, and it changed during the process. Oh, interesting. Um, because the the mother uh, is very much, you know, Autumn Sonata, of course, immediately comes to mind. But then with the sisters, Bergman's the silence, even cries and whispers. I think we're all kind of rumbling around in my head. And I Autumn think, or not. Yeah. Uh, Strindberg's interesting because I feel like people can't talk about Strindberg without mentioning that he was a misogynist. And uh, and here you have a film that's very influenced by him, but it's it's all about the women and the how they're tearing each other apart. And I think that's a really interesting uh, spin on that influence. Um, but also uh, Cassavetes, Hu Shao Shed, and Wang Kar Wai. I know you've said in other interviews that they were um, influences. Uh, is those two mostly, uh, Cassavetes and Hu uh, Shao 
but I don't copy them anymore. <laughs> no. no, not copy, but you know, like. But I did, I did. Oh, I did. Oh, yes. <laughs> I really copied them. <laughs> <laughs> you could never tell. You could never... <laughs> um, the, watching it again. Oh, um... Before one can find his own style, one copies what, well, what's good, what appeals to me. Sure. Yeah. I mean, but that's, that's like every. What's the sentence of Stevenson? Okay. You know? You know? Yes. <laughs> before, yeah. you know, before you become a great writer, you must become a great copycat. Of course. Yeah. I think anybody that writes has to feels that very much. Yeah. Yes. Um, watching it again, I kept thinking of, uh, because it had been mentioned, Cassavetti's killing of a Chinese bookie. Because uh, there's a scene where Ben Gazzara, he's, I think he's about to kill the, the man and he calls his club and is very concerned about the dance number and it reminded me of uh, Piedad in the swimming pool just focusing on all the wrong things about <laughs> making people wear the cap and the pool is not open uh, and there were a couple of your shots as well especially the where the shoes are being tried on uh, and you don't see Raquel she's off screen uh, I, I really and you're wondering what her expression is I really like that Uh, I, I think I can get out of Casavetes, but Casavetes can't get out of me. <laughs> I think something <laughs> like that. No, he was a really a great, great influence. And the 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 epiphany shot was the audition for the strip teaser in the killing of a Chinese bookmaker. You remember you you just see his back and her legs right. on the stage. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I kept thinking of that That's throughout because <laughs> it's a very observational film, uh, it, and and we can talk about your cinematographer Lenore Tellis, who this is the first time you've worked together, yeah. um, and maybe because of that, this feels a lot different than uh, than your other films. It, oh, the... yes, for sure, for sure, it's the first time I have a real collaboration with the UP. Right. And it helps that she's also a director. It yeah. helps a lot because we speak the same language. Okay. And I it's a beautiful film. There are so many uh lots of resting shots of just the property of the hotel, really right towards the end before we find out what happened to Piedad with the sun coming up. It's it's pristine, it's beautiful. Thank you. Um she fight for that shot for really? three weeks until she got the right light <laughs> okay i mean you can tell it it's you know not to use a cliched word but that that sense of breathtaking like it's it stops you it's it's beautiful um and you're so let's talk about your cast who all of almost all of whom you've worked with before rita blanco has been with you since the beginning since your debut 40 years ago yes uh and she <laughs> Is very entertaining in this. Uh, I love that you have her reading Clarice Lispector. It, it was her choice. It was her choice. Okay. <laughs> That's very telling. I don't interfere, I don't interfere very much with the characters. The okay. characters go to the actresses. Which, that, yeah, choice. that makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's a very telling um, choice for her to have Clarice. But uh, so all five of them developed along with you scripts etc but nothing is improvised in the final product nothing is improvised at the final we improvised before the shooting when we or something before the shooting we improvised the whole script and from that improvisation came come out the the final dialogues and in the shooting there's no improvisation how much i'm curious about how much rehearsal to to get there well we have a, f a first term of, of the rehearsings. The, it's a more or less two months, two months and a half, where we discuss the film and the characters, mostly. But of course, those, the, we are talking with actresses, so a lot of improvisation comes immediately, in, even in that stage. Afterwards, I build up a, a kind of, a, almost a script, structured script, and we, uh, begin again 
new stage. At the end of that stage, we have a complete script with dialogues and everything. And that's that one that we improvise afterwards to destroy it. Was it difficult to make both at once? Hmm. No. Uh, of course, of course, the second one, the process is, uh, is slightly different because the second one, is, it's the adaptation of three string bird plays. Uh, so we had a very concrete base to start with. So the rehearsals were not so long as for uh, bad living. <clears throat> but uh, no, it was not complicated because we knew, I knew, it is everything was very prepared. Okay. It was written down, written down and so on. So we knew exactly, we had codes on the slate that the crew knew, but the actors didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we knew all the time for which film was each whatever shot. Okay, nice. Interesting. Actors, of course, they couldn't know because if they know they were playing for the film of the others, it would not be, <laughs> you <Right>. know what. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting trick, yeah. Um, I, to, these are very unhappy people. Uh, so to spend kind of years developing these, I, I, I'm wondering if, I, I'm sure that was difficult, especially maybe for Annabella Morera. Uh, she's such an unlikable character and everybody around her is very, dare I say, cruel. <laughs> so I'm, I'm wondering if there was any exhaustion, I guess, for any of them. Uh, mostly for the little girl. Oh, sure. The little girl was overwhelmed. It was the first time she worked with me. She's great, but she, she, she was very, very young. She was 22 at the time. And she, yeah, for her it was quite hard, and of course for Annabella. But the, she's a kind of a extreme method actor, actress. <laughs> so it was okay at the same time. <laughs> I just, I mean, it, it's funny listening. I mean, you have to laugh sometimes because they're so cruel and petty to one another. But at the same time, it's it is a very, as an objective observer, very painful film. Um, and you spent a year researching with the therapist, correct? Correct. Like the Philip Roth sentence I, I read after he, he's dead, he, he died. And it was the psychoanalysis didn't do much for my neurosis, but did a lot for my writing. <laughs> yeah. I was all, all, when I read the sentence, I was already doing the therapy. But I didn't trick the, the therapist. She knew exactly for what it was. Sure. <laughs> sure. But I, it it comes across. I think that the attachment style issues between these five women, uh, all of that feels. Anybody who's grown up with a mother and sisters, I, I think all of that feels very authentic, uh, and just the way that people talk to each other and cut into one another. You know um, what? They know each other for twenty years. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. They were in quite a lot of films for 20 years. And uh, the relationship between them, it's not so different. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah, like <laughs> sisters, yeah. It will um, be worse in the next film. You're working on something else called staging. Is that right? What? You're, you're working on a new project called staging? Yeah. It's okay. the staging of a, a theater plate. It's a staging. It's the rehearsals of a staging. Okay. With the hall, more or less playing themselves. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's okay. The starting point, it's the recordings because we record everything. And afterwards we transcript during the rehearsals. So the, the starting point of the next film, it's the, the, the recordings of uh, bad living. Oh, the rehearsals of bad living. Lots of things happen <laughs> during those rehearsals. <laughs> I, I can't wait. That that's very exciting. Um, which is that's also a departure for you thematically because you you tend to want to focus on characters that are on the periphery, but also in their own little bubble. So I guess a stage actors they're in their own bubble too. So that that makes sense. I think it makes all the sense. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see that. And also, <clears throat> because I'm older now, 
and you you know people when get the, the get older they they get a little bit more clever than they were before sure. <laughs> and uh, so i understood why bergman was always shooting himself <laughs> yes uh, and, and like it's like a sentence by jasper jones that i can't quote because i don't remember it by heart but uh, he says that uh, we must speak about what we must speak, not about what we want to speak. Something like that. Yes, yes, I I am familiar with that, uh, and that's yeah, that that is it. Uh, interesting, because especially in something like bad living, because the essence of it is about kind of this innate dysfunction of the family, of the nuclear family, uh, and. It, and I don't know if you'd also like to talk about kind of the metaphor of social transformation that's going on about the, these women stuck on a coast uh, and how society's changed around them without them. The, 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 the idea was that the, the hotel, it's their way of living. And that's the perfect excuse for the hotel to become a prison. Mm -hmm. So they can't separate from themselves. Uh, yeah, they can separate uh, themselves from, uh, <laughs> from each other. Right. And, and yes, and they are completely out of the world. Yes, completely. Well, that, that was the idea. Yeah. Well, to, to the prospect of leaving, because Sarah is talking about selling, it spells out death. It means death for her daughter because she can't leave. Uh, it's very moving and troubling. It's very uh, cruel. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's, it is very cruel. Um, the stuff with the dog too. I, I, this, I know this is not a reference, but uh, Pia Dodd's relationship with her dog uh, reminded me of the Spike Lee movie called Crooklyn. Uh, <laughs> but there's <laughs> some, there's some fun cruelty going on with the dog and having uh, Salome watch her mother with the dog. It's its very uh, interesting. I, I, I really liked it. You know, people that can't relate with other people, they relate very well with dogs. You're right. It's easier. There's a responsibility in that kind of relation. <laughs> oh, and, and also the moment where Sarah, the, uh, the guest that has the daughter with her lesbian girlfriend, and she introduces her to Sarah, and there's that pause... <laughs> she want to address it. Keeps going, <laughs> but yes, how they're they're also unequipped to deal with the guests. They they seem very unfriendly towards the guests. It's it's very funny. The the leaving bed it, it's much more funny. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, with Lenore. Yeah, she's <laughs> really good in that. Uh, it's and they're of course standalone films, but they really work so well. You need to see both. I would recommend to anybody. That... Yes. <laughs> and, and the order, I think it's not important. It It isn't. It really isn't. And you can go back and try to... It, it's interesting seeing how they, they fit together, but uh, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I happen to see Bad Living First in Berlin. Um, but both of them enhance each other, and, the, and that's that's it. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, and uh, I'll leave with uh, a final question uh, I was curious about. Did the actors, did they pick their own names for their characters? Or yes, of course. Okay. Of course. Because they this one, I have already names because we must have a script to find, to raise money. But uh, to, on the, the treatment I send the actors, I say the names are only an idea. Of course, they, they pick up their names, yes. Okay. With a, with a little bit manipulation from the from the from the director. Sure, of course. <laughs> um, because yes, they seem very they're very fitting. Uh, the the meaning behind several of those names and what they end up doing is, I don't I don't know. It's a uh, it's a, a very effective and and also subtle but uh, sometimes uh, upsetting film. Both of them together and and very funny. Like you the. If you can't if you can't cry, you have to laugh. And I felt that watching both of these. Thank you. But uh, thank you for your time. And of course, I'm looking forward to your next film.
uh, in 25 and 25 we are starting the rehearsals only next year uh ba based on your track record uh, that sounds about right a couple of years <laughs> but that's okay because then you get perfection exactly but as close as possible you know yeah. <laughs> but thank you thank you hey this is eric from myoncinema.com if you want to support us subscribe below for more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.